question from Megan. Can you discuss the moral um, and ethical uh, quandary of large investments in increasing energy efficiency in high income areas as the wealthy consume far more energy when compared to the consumption of BIPOC low income communities? Utilities will say, well, we put out the call, right? And anybody can participate in this and it's just people don't sign up. And we know there's culturally inappropriate marketing or no marketing at all um, in communities of color and poorer communities. Um, we know that they don't have opportunities for people to speak with someone who speaks their native language um, in coordinating to get service, right? And then we know uh, this is work that Dr. Reams has done a lot of, right? That the stores in people's neighborhoods um, are not the same, right? So what you would get in a wealthier, whiter suburb um, is gonna be far better service, probably lower prices um, than you might see in a neighborhood in Detroit where you may not be able to find energy efficiency products. I've heard from contractors specifically saying they refuse to come into the city of Detroit uh, to do work, even though there are utility rebates for them to do that because they just don't need to they're afraid whatever you know race-based motives are are there um that's that's how this actually works in practice that people are excluded from that so um i think looking at those underlying practices and disparities um is a big piece of this right it's that's the reason why there's different levels of access there. And if we don't do something, we're just gonna continue that same issue that we have with EV credits, right? Where the, the wealthiest 10% are gonna capture 90% of this if we claim this is a, a race neutral and a, a wealth neutral policy. Absolutely, and one of the issues that we really need to, to shatter is that so much of the discussion uh, over the years has really focused on the idea that wealthy people as large consumers, large emitters, you know, how do we deal with that? How do we create an energy transition in relation to those populations? And, you know, part of the work that, that Dr. Reams did was to expose that there's an entire other universe where uh, people of color, for example, uh, are gonna be cut out of the energy transition precisely because of the costs imposed uh, on those communities of transitioning uh, into clean and renewable energy uh, and the difficulties that many communities face in being able to participate in the available programs. And so I think that there needs to be more symmetry in terms of focusing on uh, black, brown, and indigenous communities as emerging as leaders in the energy transition as having a different identity in relation to energy uh, in the just transition. And their carbon footprints or their energy footprints uh, may be lower in different regards, but I think that we can think more symmetrically about the fact that uh, it's of great importance for all communities to think about the dynamics that will prevent them from uh, emerging as leaders from not being exploited uh, in the, the needed energy transition.